This is Open Mike and this is Michael Shansley. And I'm here today to present a very special guest who is going to be assisting me in highlighting the areas of tourism which we need to focus upon. But before doing so, I just wanted to take a brief moment to um, express my disappointment in what I've learned lately uh, in respect to the um, convention which took place at the Comprehensive School in Castries. Um, at the Labour Party uh, convention, um, the Prime Minister indicated that the next elections will be fought between the SLP and the Shastanay family. I thought that was most unfortunate because I've always held Dr. Anthony in very high esteem and I never expected th that sort of expression from such an educated gentleman. Um, that having been said, I think it is appropriate for me to mention to the Prime Minister that the class action which he talks about with the Shastile family I th is totally incorrect because maybe he was probably too young or doesn't or doesn't recall but when I was age 16 on board a ferry owned by my father when I was helping him shortly after leaving school we used to carry copra from Choiselle to Castries for his father, Mr. David Barnard, who at that time was a very wealthy gentleman. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Park Estate is some 500 acres. So you can well imagine in those days, 500 acres of land with several hundred people working on an estate. It was rather significant. Uh, more than that, my father had a relatively good relationship with Mr. David Barnard because my father carried out a lot of his uh, paperwork in castries for him. So I don't know where the, all the money they talk about came from because I decided at age 17 that St. Lucia was a very poor country and I had to do my part in making St. Lucia a better place. As a result, I went into the shipping business and by age 21, I was able to go to many of the elementary schools in St. Lucia and pick out quite a few individuals, almost 100, brought them on board my ships. And today, those individuals are captains, officers, mechanics, welders, chefs, and deck men who have subsequently got jobs on other ships. But more importantly, some of them are in business today on their own based on the education they received. I distinctly recall that one gentleman who I took from the Methodist school at age 17, some five years later, in 1972, he was actually earning more money than Mr. Compton, who was the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. These people have built homes, and while they work with me, I encourage them to open bank accounts in Puerto Rico. And every eight months when they got their vacation, because on a ship you have to give six weeks vacation here by law, they would come home and take those monies and there are several of them who have their own homes today. So, you know, when one talks of helping the poor and dispossessed, I know all about that, but there are ways of doing it. And what I want to say to the Prime Minister is that the workhorses of this nation are the ones that pay the taxes, which, is autom which automatically finds its way into the Treasury. So when a politician goes in, he's actually spending money which the workhorses have put into the treasury. 
But in my case, it was by dint of hard work. I used to work 15, I worked 15 hours a day for over 60 years. I still work seven hours a day at my age. So I know what it is to make a dollar, okay, and to pay people. And until such time that you can actually pay a salary, you don't know what it's all about. I know what it is to help the, the poor because I've done it for 50, 60 years and I'm still doing it today. Today, because of the recession, the amount of small loans that we have to make on a continual basis, the Prime Minister will probably be surprised to know. But that is what I am doing as an individual. And if there were 50 Michael Chassis in St. Lucia, the island would see, a there would be a big difference on the island today. Because the Prime Minister alone cannot do what he wants to do. Because taking loans, as the government, as the St. Lucia has been doing for years, to pay a loan, is no loan at all. And it cannot continue. It has to come home to roost and we will be affected. So, Mr. Prime Minister, I say to you, sir, to be very cautious because those comments can come around to haunt you. Similarly, when you first came into power, I, I distinctly recall Sir John Compton mentioning that no Barnard would run this country over his dead body. And what happened? You won 16 to 1. So let that be a lesson of what can happen. St. Lucians are very passive people, but when they flare up and they make up their mind, nobody stops them. So on that note, I close, I come to the end of my, the first segment of my program. Thank you. We'll be right back.